uh, here is Dr. Nyhart at uh, 90 doing The Death of Crazy Horse. Do you want me to recite that? Would you? Yes, sir. Well, I've been talking to you, Dick, about uh, what happened before this quotation. Mm -hmm. Our crazy horse had, uh, uh, had surrendered to Fort Robinson in the spring so that his people could eat. They were starving. All winter they were eating ponies as they dropped dead from starvation. The ponies were eating cottonwood bark, and it was a bitter winter. And he surrendered not because of the uh, superior military power, but because there were no buffalo mm -hmm. and there was nothing to eat. And uh, he was taken into Fort Robinson, and uh, there he was a virtual prisoner for all summer, of course. Mm -hmm. But in the fall, he heard rumors uh, that, to the effect that they were going to arrest him and imprison him for life in the dry tortuas of Florida, uh, in spite of the fact that they said, not a hair on your head will be harmed. And he fled to his uncle's camp, Spotted Tail, just like a little boy going where he thought he'd be safe. Mm -hmm. And this is it. When they learned that he had fled, but when the, the, the white light broke along the east, there wasn't any Ogallala town. He was an Ogallala, you know. Mm -hmm. And Crazy Horse had vanished. Well, they thought that now he was on the warpath. Up and down the dusty autumn panic horsemen spurred, till all the border shuddered at the word of how that terror threatened every trail. They found him in the camp of Spotted Tail, a lonely figure with a face of care. I am afraid of what might happen there, he said. So many listen what I say and look and look. I will not run away. I want my people here. You have my guns. But half a world away, the mighty ones had spoken words like bullets in the dark that wreak the rage of blindness on a mark they cannot know. Then spoke the one who led the soldiers. Not a hair upon your head will suffer any harm if you will go to Robinson for just a day or so and have a parley with the soldier chief. He spoke believing, and he won belief. So Crazy Horse went riding down the west, and neither he nor any trooper guessed what doom now made a rutted wagon road, the highway to a happier abode where all the dead are splendidly alive and summer lingers and the bison thrive forever. If the better hope be true, there was a gate of glory yawning through the sunset when the little cavalcade approached the fort. This is what they saw. The populace parade, the straining hush that somehow wasn't peace, the bristling troops, the Indian police drawn up as for a battle. What was wrong? What made them hustle Crazy Horse along among the gleaming bayonets and eyes? There swept a look of quizzical surprise across his face. He struggled with the guard. Their grips were steel. Their eyes were cold and hard like bayonets. There was a door flung wide. The soldier chief would talk with him inside and all be well at last. The stifling, dim interior poured terror over him. He blinked about and saw the iron bars. Oh, never more to neighbor with the stars or know the simple goodness of the sun. Did some swift uh, rumor of, a, of doom begun reveal the monstrous purpose of a lie? The the uh, desert, uh, the desert island, and the alien sky, the long and lonely ebbing of life. The glimmer of a whipped-out butcher knife dismayed the shrinking squad, and once again, men saw a face that many better men had died to see. Brown arms that once were kind, a comrade's arms whipped round him from behind, went crimson with a with a gash and dropped aside. Don't touch me. I am Crazy Horse, he cried, and leaping doorward charged upon the world to meet the end. 
A frightened soldier hurled his weight behind a jabbing belly thrust. And Crazy Horse plunged headlong in the dust, a writhing heap. The momentary din of struggle ceased. The people closing in went ominously silent for a space, and one could hear men breathing round the place where lay the mighty. Now he strove to rise, the wide, blind stare of anguish in his eyes, and someone shouted, kill that devil quick. A throaty murmur and a running click of gun locks woke among the crowding Sioux, and many a soldier whitened. Well, they knew what pent-up hate the moment might release to drop upon the bungled farce of peace a bloody curtain. One began to talk. He's the commandant of the fort. One began to talk. His tongue was drunken. He was scared stiff, you know. Mm -hmm. His tongue was drunken and his face was chalk. And when, But when a half-breed shouted what he spoke, the crowd believed. So few had seen the stroke nor was there any bleeding of the wound. It seemed, this is what they told him, it seemed the chief had fallen sick and swooned. Perhaps a little rest would make him strong. And silently they watched him borne along a sagging bundle, dear and mighty yet, though from the sharp face, beaded with the sweat of agony, already peered the ghost. They laid him in an office of the post, and uh, they laid him in an office of the post, and, ho and uh, soldiers forming in a solid square, in a hollow square, kept back the people. Silence deepened there. A little while it seemed the man was dead. He lay so still. The West no longer bled. Among the crowd, the dusk began to creep. Then suddenly, as startled out of sleep by some old dream remembered night alarm, he strove to shout, half rose upon an arm and glared about him in the lamp-lit place. The flare across the ashes of his face went out. He spoke, and leaning where he lay, men strained to gather what he strove to say, so hard the panting labor of his words. I had my village and my pony herds on powder where the land was all my own. I only wanted to be let alone. I did not want to see, to, to fight. The soldiers, the, the gray fox brought his soldiers. We were poor when they went. They, uh, our babies died for many lodges burned and it was cold. We hoped again and turned our faces westward. It was just the same out yonder on the rosebud. Gray Fox came. The dust his soldiers made was high and long. I fought him and I whipped him. Was it wrong to drive him back? That country was my own. I only wanted to be let alone. I did not want to see my people die. They say I murdered long hair and they lie. His people came to kill us, and they died. He choked and shivered, staring hungry-eyed, as though to make the most of little light. Then, like a child who feels the clutching night and cries the wilder, deeming it in vain, he raised a voice made lyrical with pain and terror of a thing about to be. I want to see you, Father. Come to me. I want to see you, Mother. O'er and o'er his cry assailed the darkness at the door, and from the gloom beyond the hollow square of soldiers quavered voices of despair. We cannot come. They will not let us come. But when at length the lyric voice was dumb and Crazy Horse was nothing but a name, there was a little withered woman came behind a bent old man their eyes were dim. They sat beside the boy and fondled him, remembering the little names he knew before the great dream took him and he grew to be so mighty. And the woman pressed a hand that men had feared against her breast 
and swayed and sang a little sleepy song. Out yonder in the village all night long there was a sound of mourning in the dark. And when the morning heard the meadowlark, the last great Sioux rode silently away. Before the pony drag on which he lay, an old man tottered, bowed above the bier, a little wrinkled woman kept the rear. Without a sound and nothing in her eyes. Who knows the crumbling summit where he lies alone among the badlands? Coyotes prowl about it, and the voices of the owl assume the day long sorrow of the crows. These many grasses and these many snows. <laughs>